The Lord is the strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage, and govern them forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage, and govern them forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I welcome you to Mass this uh, Thursday in the 12th week in Ordinary Time. Uh, we're offering this Mass for the repose of the soul of Mary Thomas, and earlier this morning Father Rajesh said Mass for all the holy souls. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Uh, it's uh, very hot. Uh, it's a bit of an oven here in the presbytery. I've opened the door, uh, or the window rather, sorry, and uh, that means we'll probably have to contend uh, with the noise of the trains, especially the diesel that goes through twice, uh, once to Eastbourne and once to Rye. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of the Kings. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he came to the throne, and he reigned for three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Natasha, daughter of El Nathan from Jerusalem. He did what was displeasing to the Lord, just as his father had done. At that time, the troops of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, marched on Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon himself, came to attack the city, while his troops were besieging it. Then Jehoiachin, king of Judah, surrendered to the king of Babylon. He, his mother, his officers, his nobles and his eunuchs, and the king of Babylon took them prisoner. This was the eighth year of King Nebuchadnezzar. The latter carried off all the treasures to the temple of the temple of the Lord and the treasures of the royal palace, and broke up all the golden furnishings that Solomon, king of Israel, had made for the sanctuary of the Lord, as the Lord had foretold. <coughs> he carried off all Jerusalem into exile, all the nobles and all the notables. Ten thousand of these were exiled, with all the blacksmiths and metal workers. Only the poorest people in the country were left behind. He deported Jehoiachin to Babylon as also the king's mother, his eunuchs, and the nobility of the country. He made them all leave Jerusalem for exile in Babylon. All the men of distinction, 7,000 of them, the blacksmiths and the metal workers, 1,000 of them, all of them men capable of bearing arms, were led into exile in Babylon by the king of Babylon. The king of Babylon made Mataniah, Jehoiakim's uncle, king in succession to him, and changed his name to Zedekiah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rescue us, O Lord, for the glory of your name. 
Rescue us, O Lord, for the glory of your name. O God, the nations have invaded your land, they have profaned your holy temple, they have made Jerusalem a heap of ruins, they have handed over the bodies of your servants as food to feed the birds of heaven and the flesh of your faithful to the beasts of the earth. Rescue us, O Lord, for the glory of your name. They have poured out blood like water in Jerusalem, leaving no one to bury the dead. We have become the taunt of our neighbours, the mockery and scorn of those who surround us. How long, O Lord, will you be angry forever? How long will your anger burn like fire? Rescue us, O Lord, for the glory of your name. Do not hold the guilt of our fathers against us. Let your compassion hasten to meet us, for we are in the depths of deep distress. Rescue us, O Lord, for the glory of your name. O God, our Saviour, come to our help. Come for the sake of the glory of your name. O Lord, our God, forgive us our sins. Rescue us for the sake of your name. Rescue us, O Lord, for the glory of your name. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, It is not those who say to me, Lord, Lord, who will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the person who does the will of my Father in heaven. When the day comes, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, work many miracles in your name? Then I shall tell them to their faces, I have never known you. Away from me, you evil men. Therefore, everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a sensible man who built his house on rock. Rain came down, floods rose, gales blew, and hurled themselves against that house, and it did not fall. It was founded on rock. But everyone who listens to these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a stupid man who built his house on sand, Rain came down, floods rose, gales blew and struck that house, and it fell, and what a fall it had. Jesus had now finished what he wanted to say, and his teaching made a deep impression on them, because he taught them with authority, and not like their own scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A young Christian recently tweeted on Twitter, I am a Christian and I do not go to church. I am a Christian and I do not believe the Bible is the word of God. I am a Christian and I don't, do not hold to the church's teaching on marriage, abortion, euthanasia, etc. I am a Christian and I do as I please. And there was other such nonsense to go with it which could not be considered in any way Christian. Absolutely, it is true that those who just say, Lord, Lord, are not guaranteed entry into the kingdom of heaven. Baptism most certainly made us a Christian, and baptism is a necessary gateway to eternal life. But surely it is not the last word on the matter. To enter the kingdom of heaven, requires holiness, something we strive for in this life, but for which most of us it will be perfected when we reach purgatory after our death. There is no sin found in the kingdom of God. Sin is totally incompatible with the life of the saints, and so we seek to live a life of virtue now to make our transition to blessedness easier. Our prayer life must always be accompanied with real effort to do God's will. We are to be doers of the word, 
not just hearers of the word. In other words, to proclaim the gospel means also to practice what we preach, that is, the true measure. The people of Israel took their privileged position as the people of God for granted. They did what was evil in the sight of God. And in 597 BC, King Nebuchadnezzar controls the entire region north of the brook of Egypt, and now he lays siege to Jerusalem. There is a new king in Jerusalem, but within three months he is forced to surrender, and the people are taken captive in Babylon. Those who do not live according to the gospel end up saying things which are contrary to the faith and cause scandal to others. Jesus is the sovereign judge of the living and the dead, and we will be brought to our own personal judgment day. We do not want to hear, I do not know you, depart from me, you wicked person. Instead, we want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action we may make an offering of heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that you, all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenius Oncelia Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters that have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Adios Dei. We call it peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, we call it peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, we call it peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I am the good shepherd, and I lay down my life for the sheep, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. To remind you, the church will be open for private prayer tomorrow morning from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. and then again on Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Thank you for the two teams of volunteers that make that possible. Um, we're also hoping to add another day next week, more details to follow very, very shortly. I've also managed to open up a bit more of the church and make it a little bit more user-friendly, a little bit more conducive to prayer. The Blessed Sacrament will be exposed on the altar, so you'll be able to be in the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Ave, Ave.